Hey guys, today we're here and we're reviewing these. The Mercedes C200 and the Lexus IS250. Today we're comparing two very similar cars, both priced in the same bracket. Both aimed to be a compact sedan built for a family of four. Now, we got the Mercedes C200 there, 2016 model, and we've got the Lexus IS250 2015 model. Both are generational, comparable, because the Lexus IS didn't actually change until two years later, and the C-Class there has been the same since 2014. So we're going to go into how both of these cars drive, how good they are as a family sedan. We're gonna jump in the back seats, we're gonna jump in the front, we're gonna go through all the features in the car, and most importantly, we're gonna figure out which is better, because there is a incomparable number of C-classes on the road. It's actually Australia's best-selling sedan, whereas Lexus, however, isn't. And we're going to go into and find out why. Now, something we need to remember is that both of these cars are the entry standpoint into the range. The pricing's similar, the dimensions are similar, but the features aren't. And I think that's something important that we need to go into because whereas something like keyless entry is standard on the IS, it isn't in the Mercedes. And it's my most annoying pet peeve because how can you have like keyless start but not keyless entry? You know, but something that the Mercedes has, which the IS doesn't, is an electric handbrake. And the IS doesn't get that. Like the 2019 model still doesn't get that. So we're going to see why you'd choose one over the other. Now, if we start from the front and we just have a look at the design of both cars, they're just so different. The Mercedes, very elegant, very bubble-like almost with its round edges and round body style, and that's continuing throughout the whole car. I actually really love the design of the C-Class. And the Lexus actually takes a very different approach, really sharp, really sharp headlights, and that grill as well, it's got some nice sharp edges. And that really continues throughout the whole car. And it's a really sleek looking car. If we start from the front, the Mercedes actually has LED lights, LED daytime running lights. The Lexus has bi-xenon headlights, daytime running lights as well. Lexus having 17 inch wheels, the Mercedes having 18 inch wheels. In terms of dimensions, both cars are 4.6 meters long and the Mercedes is actually two centimeters longer, which is not even an inch. Both cars are 1.8 meters wide. So these cars are ridiculously similar. And even if you look from the back, Mercedes continues its really elegant approach, really soft lines. And Lexus, again, continues with the sharp lines. Like, look at the back lights. What I really actually appreciate on both of them is that little lip which is built in to the boot. It makes the car look just a little bit sportier. Now, the Mercedes hides its rear mufflers, whereas Lexus gives you two of them, makes it look extra sporty. Now I'm seated in the Lexus, and I'm actually really comfortable. Like, I got the seat nice and low, and the steering wheel is actually fully adjustable, and if I lock it into place, I'm actually really comfortable. Now, as I'm not too short, but I'm not the tallest, five foot 11, look how much headroom I have as a driver. And let's say you are shorter, your seat can actually go really high. That high. And I still have headroom, like, that's insane. Like, look at that. Well, now I'm hitting my head, but unless you're short, you ain't gonna sit up there. Now, if I sit, I'm gonna get back into my comfortable position. Now I'm sitting behind myself, and like I said, I was pretty comfortable there. I have plenty of leg room here, and headroom, not that much, but probably about another inch here. But I'm actually really comfortable here. And what's awesome is, you can see how wide it is in the back here. But as you can see here in the Mercedes, it isn't as wide, like, you could not sit three people here comfortably. Two people would be very comfortable, because as you can see, I have plenty of leg room here. As far as headroom goes, I've got Probably the same I do as in the Lexus. Now I've jumped into the front of the Mercedes and same thing, I'm actually really comfortable here. The seats are electronic in the Mercedes as they are in the Lexus. So I'm actually sitting in the lowest position here 
So you actually have a lot of headroom if you are a taller person. Now, if you're a shorter person, you can see you can sit very high up. And unlike the Lexus, I actually have zero headroom now. And this is what I've noticed driving the Mercedes is the cabin area feels very small. What I mean by that is everything is really close to you, such as this side panel, it's like I move, I'm not moving that much and it's right there. I actually went to turn around and hit my head against this, against this little seatbelt holder here. You know how painful it was? It was not comfortable. And the inside here, like this bit here, it's so big and my foot, they've tried to not make it so protrusive here, but it can't help but be. So if you've got wider legs, if you're a bigger chap, it's it's very tight in this, in this region here. Um, but I do love the simplicity of the Mercedes. I just don't like its girth, for lack of a better word. But as you can see, it's very nicely appointed. There's no gear shift lever in the center. The gear shift lever is here behind the steering wheel. So if you are used to driving a car with indicators behind you, be wary because with this behind you, it becomes actually really counterintuitive. And what's more important is the seats is you can't see it in the video, but they're really arched out and you can try and counteract it with the lumbar support, but it's really tricky to. It's got nice support on the sides, but what gets me, and this, this is what annoys me the most, as an entry level car, you get what they call Artico leather. Some of you may know this, some of you might not. Is it's a fake leather. It's got this rubbery texture and it's... You're spending 70 grand. You're spending more than 70 grand on the car. Give us some real leather Mercedes, please. Now, back in the Lexus, the seats here are also very supportive. And if you have a look at this seat here, there's no arch to the seat. So you can make it as comfortable as you like. And the best thing about this is, these are genuine leather. Yes, that's even on the entry model. These are genuine leather. And most importantly, you get heated and ventilated seats in this car as standard for the driver and the passenger. Whereas in the Mercedes, you get neither, nada, zilch. You want it, you gotta pay for it. Lexus, it's standard. Ah, anyways guys, I think it's time to go for a drive. So we are in the Mercedes C200 and let's begin with the engines. The Mercedes drives on a two liter turbo engine, four cylinder, which produces a hundred. It's so loud. It's so loud. It's quick though, it's pretty quick. It, it produces 135 kilowatts and 300 newton meters of torque. Now the Mercedes picks up speed really quickly. Zero to 100 in 7.3 seconds, which isn't blinding quick, but it's actually really quick for a car of this caliber because in the Lexus, it's actually zero to 100 in 8.1 seconds which feels like an eternity slower now you got different drive modes here so if i click over this button here it goes from eco to comfort to sport and sport actually really changes the car's dynamics which means that going around the bend i go around this bend it's it's really it becomes really rather rough and becomes really agile and it's like really nimble and really quite the sports car out of what seems to be a really small engine. Now, the biggest thing which annoys me about the Mercedes is how loud it is. Like I'm having to talk really quite loud to try and get my message across. And that's just because I feel like 
the car is overpowering me. Okay, that's in sports mode. Let's go into eco. Like, there's a lot of engine noise. There's a level of refinement that you expect a Mercedes to have. And it's understandable why this is Australia's best-selling sedan. The looks, the features, and you get to jump into a Mercedes. This, this very nice badge over here for as little as possible. But it doesn't drive like you'd expect a Mercedes to. I've had, I've had Mercedes from 1990. Not, not that I was alive and driving at 1999. No, no. I had old school Mercedes and a lot of them just drive smoother, like... And you know what's really quite brutal in this Mercedes is second gear, like... There's a jerk in between gears and it's like, really Mercedes? Really? Now, in terms of safety features on the car, there is plenty of safety features. It's got blind spot monitors as standard. It's got pre-collision warning control. Um, it's meant to have pre-collision braking as well, which we're not going to test out. It's got nine airbags as standard, which is really quite incredible. Now, in terms of luxury features, um, it's got a lot of this fake leather look on the dash and the doors. It's got your paddle shifts as well. It's got all your dual zone climate control, your navigation. So it comes with a few features and there are a few letdowns as well. Like something like a sound system. There's only five speakers in this car, which as you can see from the video, are not that big and they're not powerful and then not good quality either. So it's sort of like, this really luxury car isn't as luxury as you'd expect it to be because everything's an option in Mercedes. Genuine leather seats, oh, I can't stand. Like, I've been driving for 10 minutes now and my back is, they get so sweaty so quickly. Now, when you drive a modern day Mercedes, they have what's called electric power steering. Actually, a lot of cars have it. And what that means is you can drive with one finger. The way that Mercedes have done it has created a very unorganic feel. At slower speeds, it's really slow to interact because it feels like the wheel is not part of the car. It's sort of like very wishy-washy. It's like I turn, and it's like, oh, you're turning. Oh, okay, I'll turn now. Can I imagine the person behind me thinking, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> look, it's a hard thing to explain. And once you drive it, you'll understand. Like, look, so I've turned it almost all the way and it's barely turning. I don't know. Let's, let's, let's jump in the Lexus. Now, we are sitting in the Lexus IS. And straight away, there's a difference in atmosphere. It doesn't look as luxurious as the Mercedes. It doesn't feel, it doesn't have that sensation that this is a ultra luxury car. And I think that's something that Mercedes got really well in the C-Class and something so entry level is that it made it feel like a really expensive car. However, driving this is just so smooth. Now, the IS250 has a 2.5 litre V6 engine and it produces 153 kilowatts, which is actually 18 more than the Mercedes. Yet we already know that this car is slower. It's 8.1 to 100, whereas the Mercedes is 7.3. And that's due to the amount of torque the car has. This one's only got 252, whereas the Mercedes has 300. And torque is the pushing power that a car has. Now, this car has eco, normal and sports mode. So if we go around this very same corner, like we did last time, I'm actually 
I'm actually surprised. I was actually, they're actually, this is really nice. This is <laughs> okay. It, it feels very sporty, this car. IS actually does stand for Intelligent Sport, but these cars are really smooth on the road. They really take the bumps in well. I have to say, in regular driving, this is quieter. Her. It's so slow. It's, 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 so, it's so slow. And it it really gets zero power until you hit four thousand RPM. And if I put it into sport, will it make a difference? Let's have a look. Zero to sixty. Let's go. Oh, that's loud. But that sounds good. Okay. Yeah, that was actually that's actually pretty quick. Okay, the car goes a lot quicker than it feels. <laughs> that's something that's something I just noticed. In the Mercedes, you feel as fast as you're going. Like you're going 80 and it feels like you're going 80. But the Lexus is. I was actually really surprised. I got <laughs> I got up to speed pretty quickly and it didn't feel like it. Now let's talk about safety features. And there's not much to talk about. There's no blind spot monitors. There's no pre-collision warning system. There's no driver attention, whatever that thing was. So <laughs> it's, it's it's very safe in terms of airbags, it's got eight airbags. So yeah, very short combo in terms of safety features. Let's go into the luxury features. Let's, go, let's, let's, let's scooch over that. That's, that's a bit poor. Like as a 2015 model, you'd expect a little bit more. Anyways, so in terms of luxury features, of course you got the navigation, fully electric driver and passenger seats, heated and ventilated seats. Now, something it doesn't have, which I really do appreciate in the Mercedes, is the electric handbrake. Because it really does make quite a difference in driving. You don't need to push a handbrake with your foot. And there's no auto hold in this car, whereas in the Mercedes there is. Uh, auto hold meaning that the car will hold itself at a stopped position. This doesn't have it. That's the biggest difference in why the Mercedes was such a popular selling vehicle. Like, it had not only the stylish aspect of it, but it had all the safety features of it. And Mercedes for years has been providing luxury features such as leather as a standard feature. But so many people just don't care that they got everything else right, which made it leaps and bounds better than the 3 Series and the Lexus IS and the Audi A4. Like, even though I think this is a better driving car, like, remember the little rant I had in terms of the steering? Like, this is just... It's not only responsive, but it feels like the steering wheel is actually attached to the car it's not like some flimsy floppy thing and yes you can do it with one finger as well but it feels much more direct and if you want a sporty feel the 3 series is even better for that i think it's a superior driving car like the steering wheel is responsive and the way the car feels on the road is really really robust and the question is, which one should you buy? And all I can say is, you should buy the Mercedes. But the one I would buy is the Lexus. And as counterintuitive as it sounds, the Mercedes has more safety features. It has better styling. It has a lot more going for it. Yet I find myself enjoying the drive of the IS more. And... It's really a personal thing on which one you prefer because there's no doubt about it, the Mercedes is the better car. But I, I was been driving that for the last few days now 
and I can't I can't get acquainted with it I feel like me and the car are separate whereas with the Lexus it's what it is and you get really comfortable really it's like it's like being at home so anyways the final verdict the Mercedes is the better car should you buy it no go buy a Lexus because that's just such a nice driving car anyways guys I really hope you enjoyed that one and what can I say subscribe if you enjoy these videos and we got plenty of more coming out so guys until next time thanks so much for watching So guys, in a unusual turn of events, we have both cars lined up here. We have an empty car park. So we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a 0 to 50 to 0. And hopefully my face doesn't fly off when I go 50 to 0. But we're going to see which car stops sooner. Okay, what's very annoying is this doesn't have a digital tachometer. So I have to rely on the cluster okay here we go three two one Whoa. okay here we go in the mercedes zero to fifty to zero oh look look at this that is that is a clear winner in the in the zero to fifty to zero test. Like, look at this. That's almost a car's length difference. Like, that's massive. And okay, mind you, that is a really short distance. The Mercedes did feel like it stopped quicker, which is strange. Now, to be fair, both cars were in normal driving mode, but that is a clear winner to the Mercedes. Man, what a difference. What a difference. <laughs>